glad to have you all aboard. And we will start with our first guest, and that is the man about town. That is Mr. Nick Delahanty. Nick, how you doing, man? Hey, Mike. I'm doing well. Uh, so, Nick, first round reaction to the draft. Uh, first of all, we'll get to the Jets in a minute. Marcus Mariota was the most talked about, more talked about than the first pick, and that was Jameis Winston. But it ends up being Mariota who ends up getting picked by Tennessee, and they're not going to trade him. They're going to keep him. You know what? I was a little surprised about that. You know, like you said in your in the opening, it was very weird to see not many big moves go down because we were expecting all these big trades and shakeups and everything you could imagine to happen and go down. But you know what? It didn't. But it was still very interesting to see. You know, Winston going number one. I don't think that shocked anybody. The kid could play football. You get around his off the field issues. If he can stay out of trouble, I think he's going to be a great quarterback in this league. And Tennessee, I feel like. The only way they should have traded out of that pick is if they didn't think Marcus Mariota was their guy. And after further consideration and looking into him and seeing what the guy's all about, what he could do, I guess they figured that that's their guy and that's who they're going to go with. And especially because they're saying that the trade offers that were on the market weren't as good as they anticipated they would be. So, you know what, you hold on to the pick and you see what Mariota can do. Yeah, you know, and I'll say this. You know, look, I'm not big on Marcus Mariota. I haven't been at all throughout the course of this process. I thought that he was an average quarterback at Oregon. I had my concerns about him, you know, going from the spread offense to a more traditional offense that is in the NFL. Heck, I don't even think that he really fits what Kid Wisenhut wants to do. Uh, I even heard there was speculation. Of course, when you get into the draft, all you hear is speculation every single day of the week uh, regarding this situation. And the speculation that I heard was that uh, maybe uh, Mariota was forced on Ken Wisenhunt by the ownership, which, again, sounds kind of familiar to what Tennessee did when they drafted Vince Young a few years ago. So who knows? I mean, look, Marcus Mariota is going to Tennessee. If you ask me between Mariota and, uh, between Mariota and Zach Mettenberger, who would I rather have? I would take Mariota. I don't think Matt Mittenberger is a starting quarterback in this league. And I think now that he's a bit, now that this happened, by the way, uh, there's now talk that Mittenberger is going to get traded or, or his agent leaked out that he wants to get traded. Not what you want to hear from a guy who's trying to be a good teammate you, or trying to put the face of a good, a good teammate. Uh, say, you know what? I want out of here. Trade me. So not a, not a good sportsmanship by, by Mittenberger who's done nothing in the NFL. The latest I heard about that with Mittenberger was that his agent came out and said he does not want to be traded. He wants to stay and compete for a starting job. But that was a, a leaked rumor. The only trade that I did hear that a player after last night requested was Zach Stacy of the Rams after the Rams took Todd Gurley with the 10th pick. Now, if I'm Mettenberg, you know what? I go in there and I say, look, I, I, obviously this is the guy they want for their future. And eventually he's going to play, probably play me out for the spot. Well, I could still go in there. I have an audition. I could audition for the other teams in the NFL, and hopefully somebody gives me a chance. And that's what he has to really do. Now, as you were saying about how he doesn't fit into Wiz and Hutt's uh, system, talking about Mariota, I mm -hmm. believe that's a bunch of baloney, too, because if you're willing to sacrifice your second pick for a guy, you're going to have to change your offense to fit his style of play. They're going to have to make adjustments to that offense, and whether Wiz and Hutt likes it or not, that's what he's going to have to do in order to be successful with this team. Yeah, and also keep his job as a head coach. I mean, that's another thing that's going to be a big, big play here, too. Because, let's be honest, and again, folks are talking, uh, this is the Open Mic Program, Michael Cohen, your host. On the phone lines right now is Nick Delahanty, my co-host with the Jackals also, who has renamed the Around the Bases as ND, N -D, as in Nick Delahanty Sports Talk Media, as he has got that on Twitter. So that, uh, that he's putting together, very nice. New website that he put together himself. Uh, with a little help from me. I'm not going to give him too much credit. Yeah, myself. of course. <laughs> All the credit. There you go. But, uh, no, it's a, it's a very nice site. You certainly should check that out. But um, this is going to be an interesting spot for Wisenhunt because now he's under the gun. Uh, he has to play ball. He has to play this quarterback. He has to win with this quarterback. Because if he doesn't win, well, then people are going to say, well, you had, all this, you had this great trade on the table. We don't even know what that trade was. We don't even know what pieces were involved. We don't really know nothing with regards to the Philadelphia Eagles, and, you know, you blew it. Let's say, let's just say Mariota doesn't work out. He's going to get blamed for it. Or if they struggle and Mariota is playing well, but they still struggle, he'll get blamed for it. So it's almost like a no-win situation for Wisenhunt 
unless the team wins a lot of games right away. And let's be honest, with the roster they have around Marcus Mariota, is this team really ready to win? And honestly, if I had to answer that question, I would say no right now. But as we all know, it's a coach's league, and the coach is going to take the brunt of the blame if the team starts to struggle. And like you said, if he was forced on them, you know what? Bad luck for Wisdom. He's going to get blamed anyway if they lose, especially if he hasn't looked good out of the gate. And if you're Philly, you're sitting there and you're saying, man, that was the guy we really wanted. That was Chip Kelly's boy. He really needed him. I, I can't see Mariota striving in a pro-style offense. And that just might be me. A lot of people have a different opinion on that. But go, coming from Oregon, going into the NFL game, it's very different. And if you watch mm-hmm. his film, a lot of the throws he made in college that were completions are going, to be, are going to be interceptions in the NFL because yeah. of the fact that you can't get away with throwing off your back foot every time in, in the NFL and hope that the ball just goes up on the duck and nobody catches it from the other team. Yeah, I think we kind of saw that in the championship game against, or, against, or against Oregon, against Ohio State, uh, which runs a most, something like a pro-style uh, offense and defense with uh, Urban Meyer, and he got kind of really exposed in Mariota in that game against Ohio State. So... We'll see what happens. He's going to struggle. I mean, like most rookie quarterbacks will struggle. The question is, can he take whatever he struggles with in year one and adjust and learn from it and get better in year two? Or Because that's the difference right there. Can he jump from year one to year two and make that giant leap that, let's say, like a Peyton Manning did? Not saying he's going to become Peyton Manning, but you know where I'm coming from. If he wants to become that kind of quarterback, he's going to have to make that kind of leap from year one to year two. Or is it going to be one of these guys that just becomes a typical average quarterback? And we see a lot of those every single year now uh, in the National Football League. So that's going to be something interesting with him. And with Jameis Winston, I, I just, I, you know what? I like Jameis Winston. I like him from this standpoint, not from the personality thing, not from what he's done off the field. Obviously, that he's, he's a terrible person off the field. But he is such a strange character. You know, he, he says, you can trust, he says on ESPN, oh, you can trust me. And he winks when he says that. And you almost like, oh, no, here we go. So it's, it's almost like, it's almost like an HBO drama waiting to explode with Jameis Winston at any moment with, with, with regards to him. And you know what? The, the, you, funny you bring that up. One of the main reasons why I thought that, ten, that Tampa Bay was going to take Winston at number one was because of the it factor, the fact that he was going to bring people into the stands because of that character and that, that kind of weirdness that he brings to the table. And a lot of people want to see what he can do in the NFL. Yes, of course. He has a criminal background, and he's a head case. He was a head case at Florida State. You saw last night, even on Instagram, when it t- and you already saw Tampa Bay get upset with it. He posted a picture of himself eating crab legs after he got drafted. So things like that are going to be his downfall in the NFL. And we've seen him a lot. There's a lot of bad characters that have been bit by this bug and been hurt their personalities and their the way they've been portrayed on the field by this. And it can't be a good thing for Winston. Yeah. For Tampa Bay, you just have to hope that he kind of tables that. I don't know what, you know, I, I, again, with Winston, a lot of people compare him to Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, Berger, I don't see it. I, I just don't. From the physical and athletic standpoint, I just don't, I don't know what kind of quarterback he's going to be. Uh, I think it's, it's, he's, he's a big question mark, maybe even a bigger question mark than Mariota uh, coming, into the, coming into the National Football League. I, I just don't know what to expect from him. But uh, he is now a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. We'll see what happens. It's not a good team. It will not be a good team this year. I think uh, Atlanta, obviously Atlanta, Carolina, New Orleans are all better than what the Buccaneers are this year. But uh, as long as he stays out of trouble, he'll be okay. But if, uh, you know, if there is temp- always temptation, even in Tampa Bay, believe it or not, uh, as we've seen in many, the couple of Super Bowls that have been there with players getting in trouble. But uh, hopefully he stays out of trouble just for his own sake, let alone the franchise, for that matter. What I want to see is what happens when Tampa Bay starts losing. And that's yeah. going to be a big problem because when we seen Jameis Winston, he was the guy. He was the man at Florida State. And when they were winning, they were rolling. He was in charge of it. He was the one that was making the big play or doing the right thing. Now, what's going to happen if, say, Winston struggles early out of the gate and Tampa Bay finds himself in the, in the basement of the division? And how is he going to handle himself? Is he going to be a mature professional and try to get better? Or is he going to be too caught up in the money that he just signed up for today? and not worry about it. That's what I'm interested to see. Because, honestly, I think you have to give the guy a chance. I think everybody deserves that chance to prove themselves. 
But you have to have a question mark surrounding that when you're talking about Jameis Winston because of his past, and that really leaves a big question mark in my mind. 